On today's episode of Moto Cheese. The following movie is rated I. What's up, guys? Look what we're doing today in Cheesy's Garage. This is actually a 360 camera, so you can see everything from the inside of your truck all the way around to the outside. This one comes with three cameras, so you can place the third camera wherever you'd like. Let's open her up. It says mirror type dash cam. Product detail, ultra high image quality and omnidirectional recording. When the recording capacity of the auto loop image card reaches the upper limit, or round robin recording, they used to call it. GPS function. Oh, it comes with a screen protector. 11.8 inch screen. AKYD. 1.25 anti-reflection LCD protective film. So this is an anti-reflective film. If I need it, I'll use it. It stays pretty dark in there. Cigarette adapter. The included micro SD card is for production only. Format it before using it. Format it regularly to keep it stable once a month. Turn off the power before removing the SD card. Basic. There's the fisheye lens 360. I wonder what that's for. GPS unit. Cigarette lighter socket power adapter with a mini USB. Very cool idea. I've never seen that before. You can plug that right into your fuse panel and it's got a blue fuse in it so what is that what's a blue fuse 15 amp so if you wire it with the permanent wiring it'll have a parking mode so it records when you aren't around which is great it may cause a battery to run down when the engine is turned off always select parking monitoring after one minute the main unit enters the parking monitoring mode and is in the standby state when recording stops, the main unit automatically goes into standby mode. Notes recorded in parking monitor mode. The file name is displayed as year, month, day, minute, second, B slash SOS. When the 12 volt is 11.5, the operation will stop. Here's the second camera, or should I say the third camera, 3M tape. Also comes with the wire holders. For when you run the wires that's a good idea too here's the bracket for that camera gives you a panel remover tool and then that goes to your reverse and it has the mirror straps and a lens cleaner you can get an electronic user manual comes with a 32 gigabyte card pre-installed well, it looks like there's going to finally be a rear view mirror cam that you can adjust to see the front because this is going to give me a 360 in the whole cab so you don't have to worry about the position of looking out the mirror for a rear view mirror. It does not look like there's infrared on this, either one of them. Alright, it's all wired up. We'll turn it on and see how fast it powers up. Not too bad. Now, that's my belt cam. As you can see, it's reversed. And this is my backup camera. These are the four cameras that it splits this 360 view, as you can see my finger. And you can zoom in on each individual one. That's the front camera out of the 360. That's the back inside 
which it doesn't show my head, but I think it's because this rear view mirror is so low in relation to normal cars. That's the driver's side. That's the passenger side. Being that this rear view mirror is a little low, it's not going to catch my head. I suppose like a regular car or a van, it'll be fine. My neck is about equal with this. So now, you could change the different views. This is quad view. That's those two cameras. I haven't figured out how to change that. Like to change the cameras in those views yet. I mean it would have been nice I suppose if there was a way to replace what camera you want in there. But there isn't. That I could figure out. And then you have the quad view which is what we had. That's default. And you have that which is three individual. Then you have, so that's front, that's, I would be using a waterproof camera under my seat. Then this is the one that you would mount to your back window. And then the last view, that's so this gets pointed forward because it gives a circular whatever it's looking at. So the default ends up being the best view. And the settings, which you have to stop first. This is what you have for the settings. Screen brightness, the G sensor, which I turn off. This mini truck is pretty rough ride. Every time I hit a pothole or a bump, it's gonna set it off. Your frequency for the light flicker. If you want to record voice or not, I keep that on, of course. Mirror image. Let's see if that does it. That looks right. Yeah, because the big pulley's here. My drive pulley's there. So that's how you turn the mirror image off. So let's turn that back off. So I actually have the side camera, which is the waterproof camera that you're supposed to put on the side of your car so you can see if a car comes alongside you. I actually put that underneath for my belt camera because this comes with two cameras and that's the only waterproof one. Then you have a screensaver which I turned off because I want to be able to watch it all the time. So this is the camera settings. This is the system settings. You have your language. I would be English. My time zone is GMT negative five. You have a HUD mode, which I haven't connected to uh, GPS yet, so we'll see when we get outside, which is speed, direction, and clock. And then you have speed only, clock only, or off. Then you can format, do factory format, and there's your time, and there's the software version right there. The software that comes with it is in Japanese only. I'll show you when we get back inside. So that's basically it. Now when you have it hardwired and you shut it off, you have to click that sleep. So it goes to sleep because if you have power off, it shuts off totally. If you use a cigarette lighter plug, you don't have that option. Let's go for a ride and see how it works. Get some video and then we'll come back inside and see how it looks on the PC. 
go for a ride. You see I have my speedometer working up here. This is my backup camera, which is in my back window. This video would be located in the channel B folder. Audio is not recorded to the video on the side camera or the reverse camera. You could change whether the camera shows reverse or normal view in the settings on the camera. Here we have the supercharger camera, which is channel C. Also no audio track. Just the front has audio. This is the front 360 camera, channel A. It does record the audio, and the audio track is included with the video track. As you can see, it's a fisheye view, and it has to be converted to equal rectangular to be able to edit. This is what the video looks like in the Vago viewer, the program that turns the 360 into four separate cameras. In the viewer, you can actually turn the cameras wherever you'd like and zoom in and out. On the viewer, you'll also have a G sensor on the bottom. On the left, you'll see it also has GPS tracking, which I couldn't get the map image to load for the background. This is your G sensor graph down here. Down on the bottom right next to your full screen view is your export video program. You can only select one file at a time. Here you would select the view you'd like to export. This conversion program is only written in Japanese. This drop down is the quality of conversion you'd like. Select the view of the images you'd like to export. And then click the export button and let it process. The process time seems to take about the same length as what the video is. The exported video does not add the audio track. It's just the video track. The video is converted into an MP4, but it's an odd format, which some viewers and editors will not play, which kind of stinks because I cannot edit it in my video producer. I can only watch the video in VLC player. You'll be prompted when the export process is finished. It'll also open the folder it was saved in. This is the process video playing in VLC player. One thing I notice is when you format the card in the dash camera, it'll load up the SD card with a bunch of blank videos. It'll actually fill the card up. And these are the new files right here. Another issue I see is anytime you take the SD card out of the dash camera, and put it into your PC to transfer to files, you'll be prompted with a drive error. I really like the camera. They definitely need a program that can convert to ECRA rectangular. That's a tongue twister. And the converter has to have an English option. I really like this 360 dash cam, except the files are a little funky. I haven't put the review out yet because I'm waiting to see if they have any kind of firmware update, but I really like it. There will be a review eventually. This is from Japan. 360. My mirror is too low so you're only catching my neck. That's where all the extra videos have been coming from. Here's some video I took when I went to Jeff Rose and checked out the little micro van that I'm picking up. So if you're looking for a camera that will record everything inside the cab of your vehicle, then this camera might be for you. I'm hoping that in development stage that they'll come up with some new software that will address the issues that I found while reviewing this camera. I am going to keep this camera in my mini truck as my main camera for now. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on Motoshees.com. Thanks for watching.